I think my story is a story of just absolute grace and mercy. It was just a night and day different. He went from atheist to apologist. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so glad you are back with me this week. I'm glad you're back with me every week. I know I say that every time, but it's because I truly, sincerely am so thankful that you're here with me. I know that there are so many other podcasts you can be listening to. There are other YouTube videos you could be watching. um, And I am so grateful that you have decided to spend time with me this week and with my good friend, Martha Krejci. I am so excited to introduce you to Martha. You're going to have such a good time this week. We're going to talk about just some really cool things. She has an incredible testimony that she's going to share with us. She's a newer homeschool mom this year. And so it'll be fun to hear her story and how she came into homeschooling and how that's going. Like, I kind of want to do a checkup on like, how are things going with homeschooling, Martha? And, um, you know, just what the Lord is doing in her family as a result of that. And then Martha, many of you actually know her name. I know this because When we posted on our uh, social media that she was coming on the podcast and I shared some things about her book, you were like, we love Martha. And so we got some responses. And so some of you are already familiar with her. So you are going to love getting to know her this week. But before we get into our conversation, of course, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you guys are looking for a great um, homeschool curriculum, Um, that will equip your kids and you as their mom or dad for their homeschool journey, BJU Press Homeschool has something for you. They've crafted their curriculum to give you the tools you need uh, that are rooted in solid biblical foundations. And they are amazing. They have every subject, every grade. They have something for you. So if you've not yet checked them out, check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com, bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, thank you for those who continue to support the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry. There are a variety of ways in which you can do that. One, of course, is to uh, pray for us that we are always in need of just prayer warriors. And so many of you do. You send us messages and just say, hey, we're praying for you, text messages, emails, social media, and we love that so much. So thank you for doing that. You also can support the ministry financially by going to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Click on that donate button and um, you can do a one-time donation or a monthly donation. And thank you for those who continue to do that. Um, We couldn't do what we're doing without you and without our sponsors. So we're so grateful for you. Um, Also, if you haven't watched the movie, we're going to talk a little bit about that this week because Martha has kind of a neat story. It's actually kind of how we met each other was through her watching the movie. And so if you've not watched the movie Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution, you can stream it for free through our website, Schoolhouse Rocked. Dot com. Well, that was a long introduction, but Martha, thank you so much for being with me this week. For those who are not familiar with you, would you introduce uh, yourself and your family to us and, and tell us who the Krejci family is? Thank you. Um, that was, I love hearing all of like the sponsors and the stuff like that. I love everybody that is just pulling together to make this just a good, solid community. That's just really cool to hear. Um, So yeah, my name is Martha Krejci. That's how you pronounce all of those consonants really close together, right? Uh, um, My family, we, we, you know, we run a brand, we run a business from home. And so we are home most of the time. We (laughs) are those people that just don't really leave the house and we don't really care. Um, uh, My, my daughter is nine years old. She just turned nine recently. And uh, my husband just kind of works out all day what he does, you know? Um, and, and this is, this is just, this is just our life. We, we homeschool, we live in service, we live in ministry. And, uh, I don't know that there's a better life. I just don't know that there is. I was actually talking with my daughter about this last night and I was reading through Matthew and, and just reading about, um, about heaven, like what it's going to be like. And I know we don't even have the tiniest picture of what heaven is going to look like, but I'm like, I just, I want to be one of those people that when I get to heaven, God is like, well done, good and faithful servant, you know, and I'm not perfect at it by any means, but I said, I don't want to be just one of those people who gets into heaven just by the skin of my teeth. Like I'm a Christian, so I'm going to go to heaven. Yes, true. But I want to live so much more than that. I want to live in obedience to God. I want to live a life that ministers to others and that changes lives. And I know that that is your heart too. You and I've gotten to talk several times and you do have such a heart for ministry, for families, for people. And, and I appreciate that so much about you. 
Um, Martha, I know that you have a pretty incredible testimony and I would love for you to share a little bit. I, I said, I've seen so many of your just uh, uh, posts on social media and I was like, I don't know your story, but I know there's a really good one there. So I said, would you start by sharing your testimony? And you said you'd be glad to. So tell us, um, you know, what has God done in your life? Yeah. Um, I mean, from 30,000 feet and then I'll dive down from 30,000 feet he, uh, I, I'm not going to be able to say this whole thing without crying. So is this going to be, we're going to have it's one of okay. these moments here. Okay. Um, you can, <laughs> he has been there the entire time, even in moments where I was, I, uh, gave him no credit, gave and even turned my back. He has been there the entire time. And it's just, I think my story is a story of just absolute grace and mercy. Um, mm. not for me, but God's grace and mercy, right? Uh, yeah. and and how he how he hangs on to us, um, but he allows us to do what we're gonna do. Um, but he also he keeps us safe and hangs on to us in the same right. Um, and so I in growing up, I was uh, I grew up in a Christian family, um, independent fundamental Baptist, so a lot of words, right? Um, and uh, it was it was a little bit sort of like when we look at '90s independent fundamental Baptist. Anyway, um, there were there were moments that leaned toward legalism, you know, where there was there were there were just pieces in there that uh, for me and uh, when when I was growing up, there were just some pieces in there where I was like, uh, yeah, but why? Yeah, but why? Um, and so. I, I, I was a person that went to church, you know, two times on Sunday, on Wednesday night, we were at Tuesday night prayer, you know, I was in the church, in the church all the time. Um, even when I went to daycare, that was at church, right? Like it was, I was all in it. Uh, we went on, um, you know, in, in the summer times, we would go on these musicals. We would go on tour with these, uh, these musicals, like Christian musicals to different churches and stuff. And, um, it was just, it was a really, I thought it was a really excellent childhood. Um, but the thing is, is as I look back now, I was checking boxes instead of having a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was as, as I approached, you know, 18 and started working in the workforce, which I worked in restaurants. And so in restaurants, you can kind of get around, um, you know, you can, uh, that's where I got into an alcoholism thing. Okay. So as at, not when I was 18, but after I was 21, but as I was, as I was getting older, I started to pull away from the church in search of honestly, what I can see now as the relationship with Jesus, I pulled away in search for something real in search for something that, that would actually move me because it was just so, um, the, the best, the best way I can describe this is it was pseudo pharisaical. Does that make sense? Where mm. the checking of the boxes, it's like, mm. you have to do this, yeah. you have to do this, you have to do this. Um, but it wasn't like, okay, here's who Jesus is, right? Here's how right. you have a relationship with Jesus. Here's how, and, um, and so I went off in search for, um, for something real, something that felt mm -hmm. real. Well, it, the enemy is going to take a kid looking for something real yeah, and, and not looking for it in the Bible because thinking that that's not actually it. Right. And I, I went on a, a journey through new age through, um, psychic stuff, through whatever I was, I was all in new age. I started out, uh, just kind of like tiptoeing around and around sort of like the, the manifesting and the whatever, you know? Um, uh, and then I went all in, like I said, into psychic stuff and blah, blah, mm. blah. And, and, and as I'm going into that, I've got this alcoholism problem like a problem. Uh, it was not, it was, it was not good. It was not, it did not serve me. 
Um, it was hurting my relationships. It was hurting me. Um, it was hurting how I carried myself. It hurt everything. It, it was not, I could not show up as who I am under uh, drinking alcohol. Right. So anyway, all of that is happening. I get married once, uh, and, and then that ended in violence and then divorce. Okay. So I'm mid twenties divorced alcohol, like raging alcoholic at that point. Right. Um, living in a basement of a friend's house that let me stay there because post divorce, I had no money. Um, and, and, and I had my rescue dog with me and I couldn't afford anything. I couldn't even afford to feed myself. I would buy her cheeseburgers from Hardee's, right? Because, and put them in her food dish. Cause that's all I could afford was wow. like a, what? 50 cent cheeseburger or something. And, um, that's when cheeseburgers were 50 cents. <laughs> um, I sound like I'm 90 years old, but it's not the case. It wasn't that long ago. Um, but that's, that was to me, that was rock bottom. That was, mm-hmm. that was, I started to, to, to feel and hear the call then, but I was too under the influence to actually respond to it. Well, mm-hmm. fast forward about, gosh, five-ish years. Um, I had met another man. I was married to him. It's Mike, who is my husband now. Um, he's a fantastic guy, but he was raised atheist. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, and I had no problem with that at that time because I wasn't, sure. you know, I was, we were kind of on the same page and whatever. And, um, and then this happened. Here's, here's, here's where it all started. Cause I, when I sat in the basement, I remember so clearly when I was in the basement of that person's house that let me stay there. And it was so great. I remember staring at the wall and we have these moments of clarity right? Mm -hmm. Where you can see the forest for the trees, where you can in these like brief shining moments. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We have these moments of clarity, right? Where you can see the forest for the trees. Right. And I had a moment and I can still remember it clear as day right now where I stared up at the wall and I kind of just, I started thinking like, what happened to me? Like what, what, where did I go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Where did I go wrong? And then also how do I get back to good? And that's where I started even just looking at my childhood and thinking, on paper, that ain't bad. On paper, I'm not, I'm not going to blame my childhood over anything. I had a fantastic childhood. And, and it's just like, where did things go wrong? And I had to start taking ownership of, Mm -hmm. of my own, like what, what the choices that I made in this space. Right. And so whenever I, you know, met Mike, and then these things started happening. We were married and uh, we already had a baby at this point. It took us a long time to be able to have Nora, but then we finally had Nora, um, which is just such a blessing. She's just a blessing of a kid anyway. But uh, what happened was we lived, at that point, we lived in Iowa and I am from central Illinois, okay? okay. Uh, people started passing away in my family And there were many people within six months that started passing away. And I'm the kind of person that I go back home. If I go to the funerals, I go to be with the family. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. And it was about a four and a half hour drive. And uh, Mike stayed home with Nora. And I was making this drive by myself. Okay. And the first drive there and back, nothing changed. Then the second drive, um, I started getting nostalgic. And when Mm. I started getting nostalgic, I started listening to the songs that I used to listen to whenever I lived in Illinois, right? And so we're talking Michael W. Smith, 
right? <laughs> David Curtis Chapman. Wait, I, uh-huh. all the all the hits started coming up, right? Uh, a little bit of Newsboys, Audio Adrenaline. Like I started yeah. just listening to all of the DC Talk. Um, I started listening to that again, and a song came on that I used to love when I was a kid, but I didn't know why I loved it so much. I don't know why it hit me so hard when I was a kid, but I loved it so much that when I heard it again, when I heard it again at this point in my life, I kind of understood why it meant so much before. And the song was, and I don't know if you know this song or not, um, but it was, I Miss the Way by Michael Hmm. W. Smith. And some of the lyrics were, I miss the way his love would dance within your eyes. I miss the way his heart was the, um, the soul of your life. Um, and, and then there were, the, it kind of goes into some more lyrics around, um, how some people are writing you off, but, but he's just sitting there waiting for you to come back. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I knew this was going to happen. So. As I was listening to that, so it started with nostalgia and then I heard that song. And then as I was listening to it, it was, I just put it on repeat and I let it keep speaking. And, uh, that was it. That was the Mm. moment. That was the moment that he brought me back home. Like I could just feel him doing the whole running for the one and leaving the 99. Like I could feel it. Mm, wow. And, um, and immediately I did an about face. Now here's the scary part because I was like, okay, I'm living my life for you. We're doing this new and different. We're doing yeah. this. We're not checking boxes. We're living in where I'm living in full surrender and in full sacrifice to you, I'm about to do this. Like I'm doing this thing. The scary part was I'm not, I'm married to an atheist. Right. At yeah. that point in time. And right? you're raising a daughter together. And we're raising a daughter together. And uh, when I got to Springfield, I'm like, well, I'm going to buy a Bible because I didn't have a Bible. And, you know, huh. and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to get a Bible again. And uh, I went home and then I'll, all these, you know, thoughts keep coming up in my head of like, what if he finds out? Like, I'm not what he signed up for. Yeah. And uh and I don't want my marriage to end because I love him. Sure. And uh and so I hid my Bible <laughs> in the house. I would hide my Bible because I didn't want him to find it and I didn't want to have this conversation. Yeah. Um because even though I had been born again when I was a child, I'm still kind of a baby Christian at this point, sure. right? Yeah, and, and you're working uh, through the changes in your life and what this is going to look like for you. Yes, right. Yeah. Well, and I I am fully immersed in new age, right? Right. And so I'm doing wow. an about face. It's like it's like I walked into the darkest room possible and then God just lit me up in the middle of the room. Everyone witnessed what wow. happened. It was a very cool thing. But that's just God. That's God. And yeah. so um And so I was hiding my Bible in the house and one day Mike found it. And he's like, so what's this? And I'm like, oh gosh. (laughs) Uh, And I told him, you know, I told him what I just told you. And, um, and I was like, just, you know, this is a great time to say, I am going to be finding a church in the area and uh, I would like to go to it. uh, And I would like to take Nora if that's okay. And he said, well, I, you know, you don't want me to go to it, do you? And I said, you do what you want to do. I'm not going to force you to do anything. Um, I'm, I'm going to go and I would like to yeah. take Nora. That's, that's where I'm sure. at with it, right? Because I'm very familiar with the idea that the Holy Spirit's going to do what the Holy Spirit's going to do. And, yeah. it, and our job is only so much. And then the Holy Spirit is going to, you know, and so, um, I, I was like, I'm not going to push you into anything at all. I just want to have the freedom to do this. And without you feeling judged or whatever, I just want, just let me do this. And uh, we came to an understanding there. And I was able to take Nora to church and I went to church. And, and so that continued until we moved down here to Florida. And then I found a church 
here that I really liked and I was taking Nora to. And then Mike started coming to church, but he admittedly today will say he started coming to church because he wanted to be a good role model for Nora. He wanted wow. Nora to see her parents coming to church together. So you could yeah. see God starting to work on him there, even if that that would matter to him, right? As yeah. an atheist, why would that would sure. even matter to him? And, um, and so I was good with it. I was like, that's fine. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's totally okay. And, uh, and then, um, it wasn't until not last October, but the October before last. Okay. okay. So October, 2022. God just snatched up my husband. Wow. Out of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> One night, he's an atheist through and through. The next day, he knows Jesus. Wow. Like, like had a radical encounter with Jesus. And wow. uh, and it was just, it was just a night and day different. He went from atheist to apologist because wow. now that's how he he's he's knee deep in you know like gregory kokel stuff and he's just all about apologetics and really being able to share the gospel in ways that are graceful and um and it's just he's he's just he became a different man immediately and i think what i want to say the most here is it's so important to pray for the people around us because yeah. I know that before I had my encounter again, my sister was praying for me. Wow. And I know that when Mike had his, I was praying for him, right? That we really, that intercessory prayer is so important yeah. and, and that God can just flip a switch. It's just like night and day. It's not even like, can this person change? It's, Let's watch this person change, you know, like yeah. let, just watch God do his thing because it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. to watch him work. But that's that's my own kind of like in a nutshell. I couldn't really get yeah. into all the details or anything. But in a nutshell, that's our story. It's oh, it, wow. it's just God's mercy all day. Yeah. Oh, so cool. It's so neat to yeah. see how the Holy Spirit re really can transform us and what yeah. hope you have offered just in your testimony to those who, listening who maybe they have a husband who's not walking with the Lord, or they have a child who has, you know, walked away or has never walked with the Lord and just us praying for them and, and us living our lives as Christians can be such, um, it can be so enticing to them, right? You know, you've yeah. got people who are desperately, and you talked about, um, you know, how you grappled with your faith. And I think that's an important thing because uh, especially as homeschool moms, you know, we're Christian homeschool moms for the most part who listen to this podcast are Christian homeschool moms. Yeah. We're so intentional about raising our kids and pointing them to Jesus. Yeah. Yet many Christian homeschool families have kids who walk away. And one of the reasons is because those kids, sometimes they really do need to grapple with their faith. They need to know what they believe and they need to know why they believe it. And I think oftentimes that's a good thing. Now, of course, the prayer is always that they will come back to the Lord, you know, that they will surrender their hearts fully to him. But I think sometimes that makes for the strongest believer and strongest follower of Christ is those who have really had to struggle through their faith and, and what they believe. And um, so thank you for sharing that. That's an incredible testimony and praise God for um, you and Mike. And now you're homeschooling Nora and getting to point her to Jesus as well. And that's such yeah. an incredible story that you have. So we are out of time though, but we're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to talk a little bit about homeschooling and about Martha's journey, getting into the world of home education and what that's looked like for their family. And I'm excited to talk about that as well. So Martha, tell our listeners really quickly where they can find out more about you. Oh, um, I'm kind of all over the social medias, but if you go to withmartha.com, so withmartha.com, you'll see it's kind of a hub for everything. So yeah, you've got so much information on there. Uh, good information, not in a way that's overwhelming. Actually, your website is incredible. I was looking through it and, um, and, and it's very well laid out. So it's not overwhelming, but there's a lot of resources in there. And, and those resources, um, many of what you, ha um, much of what you have on there is how, we as homeschool moms, and it's not just for homeschool moms, but how as people we can work from home and help provide income um, for our families. And so she's got 
tons of free resources on there uh, that you can use. And um, she's got an incredible book called The Home-Based Revolution. We're going to talk about that a little bit um, on Thursday. So thank you, Martha, for being with us. Um, I'm so excited to get to chat with you and, and what a beautiful story you shared. And thank you guys for listening. We love you so much. Stay tuned to the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next on the podcast. And remember, you can find everything Schoolhouse Rocked at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. We can't see what's happening know what they're doing and then put our heads in the sand and say, well, it won't be my kid because that's probably every parent's story that sure. then it was their kid. We have to sacrifice what we have to sacrifice to make sure she's okay. She's our kid. God gave her to us. Like we right. are supposed to be the steward of her. Right? right. And so we can't know what's going on out there and say, okay, well, hopefully it doesn't affect her. Hopefully she's smart enough. It doesn't have to do with smarts. They have a heavy agenda. Right. And they're children. And so that's, it's not hard to put this agenda on children. And so yeah. like, it's just, we, we just have to, we have to suck it up. <laughs>